Yeah. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Sunny. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the Ferris assistant at Print and Matter. And today I'm joined with Prem Krishnamurthy, um, who is going to give us a little tour of the fair. Hey, Prem. <laughs> hey. Hey, Sunny. Great to see you. Um, it does look, in fact, sunny in New York today, <laughs> which is which is a good thing for winter. Yeah, it's really uh, Cool. So maybe we'll just hop in. I'll um I'll share my screen and we'll we'll start with the homepage of the fair. Sounds great. Okay. I just want to say I love already this site from the first page. I mean, there's just something about the energy of it. It makes me immediately feel like I'm there at the fair with a bunch of folks, which is great. Yeah. So where should we go? Well, I mean, you know, one of the things about the site that I really like is, you know, I feel like since the pandemic started, I've been thinking a lot about the social role of art and how, you know, art in my mind has always been a vector, or just a vehicle for different kinds of communities and communication. And I mean, we know that, that from art openings or from, you know, other kind of art fairs and all of these gatherings are ultimately about different people coming together. And it's something that I really miss in this moment of, you know, the kind of early Zuma scene where, you know, you meet people you might already know, you talk to your family, uh, but you actually miss those kind of chance encounters or weak links or weak ties and the things that actually make um, a kind of social system function. And so what I love about the website is that it seems to actually encourage that. It has so much more energy than a lot of other things I see. And I mean, from the first time I opened it up when y'all sent me the link, uh, I mean, I immediately wanted to go to, wait, can we try the little dice at the bottom? Yeah, let's do it. Oh, I love the dice. It's just suddenly it's like, oh, we have a random exhibitor. Oh yeah, we have Torpedo Press. I mean, I know Torpedo Press, but it's still cool. I mean, we can just keep clicking that little button and we'll keep getting different things, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, first that's Crevice. I do not know them and they're based in Japan, which is fantastic uh, to kind of see a publisher from somewhere on the other side of the world. I mean, can we go before we jump into exhibitors, could we go to the, the arcade? Yeah, let's do it. It's so fun. Yeah, and I mean, I, I just want to say I love the energy of this. I mean, I, I encourage any of the folks who are watching this who haven't been to the site yet, wander around the arcade. I mean, I love how you've really used almost like a digital duct taping approach of all of these different things. Like you have a chat that is Chatango, you're using Google Docs to have people take pictures and put them in a photo booth, guest book. Um, you know, you have like a Miro board where people can draw with the late, great Jason Pollan. Um, and, you know, I just think there's something really amazing about this. And I also downloaded all of the artist backdrops. Uh, so that's fun. Maybe we can try the book cloud because that's another fun thing. It's like a way to just see random things that you wouldn't otherwise get to run into. So let's see how many of these I know. I mean, do you know, have you ever, do you know Umberto's, uh, Umberto Echo's idea of the anti-library? I don't. Um, it's like Umberto Eco, I can't remember what essay or book it's in, but he basically claims that the value of a library is not in the books that you've read, but in the books that are unread. Mm -hmm. And so it's essentially like, yeah, I mean, I don't think I know, I know some of the artists I know, B. Wirtz, I know, but I don't know any of these books. And that's exciting. I mean, I think, you know, one of the things about the book fair is for me, I mean, the experience of wandering around it is always that there's certain people I go to first. Oh, other forms down at the bottom. Those, can we, can we click on that? Yeah, let's uh, see. And it brings us right So to actually, other, oh, it brings us right to that book or to their, to their page, page, to their yeah. page. Yeah. I mean, here's one, for example, like I actually, I didn't know other forms before coming and checking out the fair uh, when it started. 
It turns out I actually know one of the two people in them. I know Alan Smart, but I had no idea that they were doing this stuff. And, you know, what appeals to me is a, the fact that, of course, I mean, I come to all this stuff as a graphic designer, even though I'm working as a curator and working on triennials and stuff now, I still think about art as a kind of communication. And I love typography, I love design, but I also love thinking about politics. And so the way that they're thinking about the labor embedded in printing and design and, oh yeah, typography, automation, the division of labor, brief history. That's like so in my corner of the proverbial like billiard, you know, game. And, um, and just the fact that they're, you know, they're close to home in some ways, but I didn't know they were doing this and uh, I love seeing it. It's got so much energy and, you know, maybe in this moment, it's interesting because you know, I've had a lot of mixed feelings about Rizzo as a form, but actually it might be in this moment of disembodiment where, you know, I no longer get to see art exhibitions uh, where, you know, the main thing I encounter as artworks are books. And so like the materiality, the making of a Rizzographed pamphlet and being able to see how people made it, there's something that feels really, you know, even more relevant now mm -hmm. because of, you can really sense the love mm -hmm. that goes into kind of trying to get some sort of word out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the urgency. Yeah. Cool. Cool, yeah, yeah, maybe we can go there. So yeah, I mean, on the other hand, I mean, the other thing that I always do too is, I mean, I go to the programs too. We're here on the exhibitors, but like, I mean, yeah, we can uh, we can start anywhere. I mean, I'm just thinking of a couple things that stood out to me that I was definitely interested in. I mean, uh, you know, I, I immediately saw that uh, occasional papers was doing something. Oh, there it is, the natural enemies of books. And, you know, again, occasional papers, these are folks I know, and um, I know a couple people on that panel, but um, it's a book I didn't know about that is about a messy, messy history of women in printing and typography. It's like a political history of design that tries to kind of recenter important voices that have been seen as being on the margins. And so like something like that, uh, it's, totally in my yeah some of these things are like they're more obvious to me or at least like they're really like you know the things that I'm thinking about and I mean another one I mean I know you're you're part of Wendy's Subway right hmm. you have like you have multiple hats uh I mean I know like Wendy's Subway had uh Oh, cool. You're going to figure out how to get there through the tags. See, I haven't even spent very much time with the tags yet. So, um, you know, the the Scott Pinka book that you all put out with CCS is Bard CCS is really exciting to me. I mean, I uh, I have a, a, a old long love uh, with CCS and, you know, this and I know Julie Nimi who edited it. And it's just so really uh, exciting to see it. It looks it's like it's such a nice narrow format. It's kind of uh, it's very vertical. Um, and I, I mean, even if I can't pick it up and like, you know, feel it, I, I can sense something about its design mm -hmm. that already draws me in. And um, so there are things like that. Um, I mean, on the other hand, you know, I think there are also, yeah, there's some like other publishers I, I always go to. I'm always going to go to see Roma publications, for example. I mean, from the Netherlands, just because, you know, they publish Carl Martins, who is a dear friend and mentor and colleague and partner in crime sometimes. And, you know, uh, or like somebody like Patrick Frey, who is always yeah. putting out these exquisitely produced books um, that are just great or, you know, like Dancing Foxes uh, who are such great editors and publishers. Um, but I think that, I mean, I mean, and they're also, you know, I think like, you know, every time I come to the fair, I always encounter something new, like, you know, two publishers in the last couple of years, the editions that I've encountered only at the fair or met there were like conveyor editions in yeah. New Jersey. 
I kind of have a, let's say like I was born in New Jersey, I was born in New Brunswick, uh, as, as many folks of South Asian uh, descent and diaspora. Um, and so, you know, I remember when I first met them at the fair a bunch of years ago, bought some of their books, loved just the way they kind of use design, but also the materiality of the books that they bind them themselves. And um, that really appealed to me. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I also think about somebody like, you know, another publisher I encountered for the first time at the fair was Press Press. Um, um, where they're in Baltimore, right? Yeah, they're in Baltimore. They're kind of all over the place right now, but generally. Big. Okay. I mean, these are like, like, I mean, I don't, you know, I, I mean, they're, they're folks that I've met at the fair and saw some books and bought them and like they were super nice. But it's also for me, like they're working on all these things around cooperative economies and skill sharing and creating toolkits, things that kind of, you know, basically make methodologies available for other people. And, you know, that on a political level, it really resonates with me. I mean, particularly in this time of the pandemic, I mean, I, I don't know, I think everybody is thinking about care, healing, you know, how like mutual aid, interdependence, and something we're thinking a lot about with the front triennial that I'm artistic director of. And so something like this, you know, it's just great to be able to see their work in this context. Um, let me think. I mean, a couple of other things too. I mean, of course, like I have to give shout outs to the folks who are also like, people I'm, I'm, I'm just working with or involved in. I mean, usually uh, at a book fair, I'm you know either there sitting at a table or doing a talk or doing a conversation or doing karaoke sometimes. Um, so like the people I think of are, um, for example, the Kunstinstitut Meli, um, who formerly known as Vita de Vit. I mean, I'm super psyched to see their page up here. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, full disclosure, I, I mean, I've been working workshops, my graph design studio has been working with uh, the Werkplatz typography who are also exhibiting here to redesign their visual identity and, you know, kind of their whole look. So we've kind of been involved in, in that new swirly logo type and this crazy typeface, but they're fantastic folks and I'm glad they got it up online here. Yeah. Um, but like also people like, yeah, well, I mean, I definitely need to give a shout out to uh, Paper Monument too, mm -hmm. since, you know, full, again, full disclosure, I am, uh, I, I, in one of my hats, I'm uh, an editor of Paper Monument, but there's a fantastic new book that, um, uh, let's see if we can get to there. There's a great book called Best. Oh yeah. I mean, one thing to say is Paper Monument is really, you know, I've been talking about slow exhibition making recently, slow curating. We, we definitely are a slow publisher. We come out with like one book every couple of years. Um, but this one, the new one, Best Letters from Asian Americans in the Arts, um, Chris Ho and Daisy Nam edited this. And it's just like this amazing rich compendium of letters from lots of folks. And I, I, I wrote one for it. My business partner, Chris Wu wrote one for it, but it's just all these amazing people. So yeah, the epistolary form is just, it's so rich. And we, um, we had the launch at the classroom yesterday and it's available to watch um, up on YouTube with um, a transcript and everything. And it was a really, really beautiful conversation. Um, yeah, I'm just so glad that, that Chris and Daisy have made that process a project happen and brought in such great people. Yeah. Um, another one I think about is um, Domain, uh, yeah. which is new, like a kind of new publisher, but you know, that's, that's, uh, it's run by David Knowles, who's a graph designer, curator, editor, kind of like, you know, young, fun, polymathic guy, but um, I've known David for a long time. I love what he's doing. He just put out this book, Drag Explosion. That's Did they had a, they had a launch too, right? Uh, they, um, they're doing a, a, a program on their page, I know, um, during the fair. And also, full disclosure, David is our next uh, resident at Wendy's Subway. And we're really oh, excited to like okay. get into this book and get into um, his project and, and future projects um, together in the, in the spring and in the summer. It's going to be really fun. Uh, 
I mean, I mean, I just, I just love the fact of, you know, I'm all for graph designers branching out. And so I really like the idea of making such an eclectic body of books and, you know, thinking about how they're distributed, yeah. um, thinking about the, the, the ways in which they travel through the world, but, you know, just the different, you know, kinds of things they're doing are really exciting. Um, I mean, and so, but I mean, of course, like on the other hand, I think the really exciting thing about the book fair is not just the folks I know, but all the new people. And so it's like, you know, one of the things I love about this interface, I have to say, um, and just this exhibitors page is the way that you've set it up so that everybody can really customize their page. And it feels, I mean, it's like, it's about display in some ways about design, but it's also like people can really have like a, an attitude. And so I found myself like, I spent the first, I spent like an hour or two just clicking through. I think I opened something like a hundred links on my computer and then my whole cr browser crashed and I had to like start over. But it's like, but I just found things like, you know, in the nor, in, sorry, not in the, well, you know, if this were in New York or in LA, I would go there and there'd be so many exhibitors that I would just go to the folks I knew and then I'd run into a couple of things along the way, but this just cuts through all the different categories. Like here's one, can we just go to the alphabetical list for a second? Yeah. There's, uh, or no, the just the it's alphabetical cool. exhibitor, just the scroll. I was looking for, um, you know, a couple people I didn't know at all. Okay, well, here's one, Eight Ball. Didn't know Eight Ball, and um, I think the work that they're doing around kind of aid and solidarity in the time of the pandemic seems super interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, that was like a totally new one to me. Since they've got a number and not an A, they show mm -hmm. up at the top of the list. Um, but then other folks like, um, what was it? It was, oh, uh, Arthi Akapedia uh, and Philip Schmidt. Like that to me was really fascinating. I mean, here are two artists working with computation and algorithms, but also with the materiality of the book in a really particular way. I love that combination and it uh, seems super fascinating. Um, and then what's, let me, well, I mean, just flipping through, so many of these are exciting to me. I mean, it's like, but I'm thinking of, you know, things like uh, what another one that really stood out to me. I guess that's it's further down, so it's going to take a while if we do it this way. But it's like uh, Flower Press is really exciting to me. Oh, I just saw the Black School. That was a new one for me that I was super interested in. Oh, Dancing Foxes, love them. But um, you know, love what they do. Uh, you know, so it's just like getting this like visual sense of all of these different ideas about, oh yeah, facotomy, that was crazy and cool. And, you know, it's just like, I think there's a way that this browse, oh, Flower Press, there it is. Yeah, I love what they're doing and thinking about, um, and thinking about care in using poetry and publishing chapbooks. Oh, and, and they have Deem, which is a journal I really love, um, you know, a new kind of journal focused on design and social practice. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, just this scroll itself kind of made my day. I mean, it, I have to say it was probably the most joy I've had online um, in a while. I mean, and that's not something I usually talk about because, you know, as we all know, we're sitting on computers losing our minds. And, um, but, but just like, there's something that's so exciting about how people are really using this space of publishing um, in this in a way that's both totally contemporary, it's very much of the now, but it's also connected to why books were important in the first place. Because I mean, I always think of the fact that a book is a conversation or many conversations. I mean, it seems like a finished thing, but actually a book is a kind of collection of ideas and things that come out of conversations. And then once it entered into the world, it sparks other conversations. It's just that they're spread out over time. They're not all happening right here and now, but it might be a month, a year, 10 years, a hundred years, but it creates a kind of long form dialogue. So yeah. I'm just so thrilled for you all and also for the fact that you know you've spent so much time making something I think is really useful to a lot of different communities myself being one of them and being you know somebody who now that I'm in Berlin for a while uh, and have been since the pandemic it's like I'm so glad to be able to see this stuff. 
yeah, it's it's really nice to to um to bring people together around these really amazing books and also to be to be a part of this community and to have conversations like this. Um, it's really special. Um, cool. cool. Well, thanks so much, Prem, for for having this conversation and, and taking time to to walk us through some things you're excited about at the fair. We're really we're really grateful, and it's it's been really fun to to hear what what's on your mind. Cool. Well, thank you so much again, and um, hey, to anybody who's watching this, have fun. <laughs>